procedural programming was a long-lived technology of the previous century. Its basic principle was to break functionality into procedures, or functions. At the same time, data remained widely accessible by any part of the program. At the beginning this arrangement seemed fine, until there was a need to modify or extend already existing program. Soon everybody realized that global data was a recipe for bad coding. Adding new functions was fine, but when a change was made to one procedure, another would often break. Since nobody was planning for a change, there were a lot of dependencies between existing procedures. Similar to previous separation of procedures, the new technique would allow to divide data into separate scopes. So the idea was hiding data. Data hiding means isolating data into restricted areas where only specific procedures could have access there. The advantage to hiding data was clear. Both procedures and data became much better organized. Dependencies were reduced to a minimum. Connection between procedures and variable attributes gave birth to the concept of objects. In Java terms, Procedures are typically referred to as methods. The data is commonly known as attributes. Essentially, an object is collection of methods and its attributes. Objects communicate with each other by sending messages. First, objects must know about each other existence. We say that an object has a reference to another object. Then, an object can call methods of other objects. In terms of system design, first object is sending message to another. All object methods specify its behavior. The attributes define its current state. We say that the attributes of an object determine its state. It is important for every object to preserve its attributes. For that, each object needs to have a set of methods that isolate attributes from direct access by other objects. This strategy is known as data hiding technique. Data hiding helps to keep internal details of an object in a clean state. 